a little bit more about this to Pauline Vera, a legal associate at an immigration clinic here in Washington. Uh, Paulina, welcome. Thank you. Uh, this case isn't just about challenging and defending President Donald Trump's controversial temporary travel ban, but it's also about limits on his constitutional powers, isn't it? Um, yes, I would say so. So does the president have the power to do something like this? I guess it depends who you're talking to. Well, he does have power to, to enact certain executive orders, but I think the challenges here are whether those executive orders comply with certain parts of the Constitution um, and with our immigration laws um, and just overall challenging the legality. So I'm assuming you heard the oral arguments yesterday. Your thoughts on how it went, how long will it be before there is some kind of decision, and how likely is it this will go all the way to the Supreme Court? Yes, I did hear the arguments last night. Um, and so the Ninth Circuit said that as soon as possible, they would be um, issuing a decision on whether or not um, the stay will be granted for the government, so whether this ban can continue. Um, but from there, if, if the ban is not allowed to continue and the temporary restraining order is put into place, um, there are several different options. Um, they can appeal that decision up to the Supreme Court, um, they could also uh, potentially ask the Supreme Court for a hearing, um, or they could allow it to be, be kicked back to the district court and then eventually appeal it up to the Supreme so Court. So based on what you heard, which side, and I know it was just one day of hearings, mm -hmm. which side made a more convincing argument? I think that the side of the states made the more convincing argument. Um, so some of the things that they had to show right were the, um, the harms to their citizens. I think that there are various arguments, right, economic. Um, they cited some harms to their public universities as well. Um, and then I think that there are some valid arguments that this violates uh, the Constitution, looking at um, equal protection clause specifically of the What does Fifth this Amendment. mean for people traveling from the seven affected countries now that the fate of this executive order is up in the air? Well, I think it's just causing confusion um, both for uh, immigrants, both for people, for uh, families of these immigrants, um, for government agencies as well, CBP, for example. Every single day, it's changing day to day. Um, and so how to enact these executive orders if they, if they need to uh, follow through with them um, has but been But many are taking everyone. advantage mm -hmm. and actually traveling to the United States because of this court's decision, basically putting a hold on the executive order. I don't think it's taking advantage if they have um, a non-immigrant or uh, a non-immigrant visa or they are uh, a permanent resident, for example, to, to come into the United States. All right, we'll leave it there. Paulina Vera, thank you so much. Thanks.